guys, Project Reaper here, bringing you another Task Force Operation with Commentary. Let's jump right into it. We got an attack on Hacksaw. My boy Elvis here is using some heavies, Zookas, and one boat of medics. Those medics are just going to be there to heal up any excess damage that happens to the pretty solid composition. Whoops. So we took out the rockets here so that they weren't firing off to the left on on these squishy squishy zookas, bazookas. And then he's got the heavies up front tanking most of this. Oh, that mortar hurt. Now, I don't know why he did not decide to shock this cluster, but if you can see my mouse guys, I hope you can. Where these zookas are standing here, here and here. These four were mortars. This was a rocket launcher. If he had dropped a shock right in the middle of all that, he would not have lost any Zookas right here. Not not a single one. So, um, you know, I don't know. Just, just keep that in mind. Uh, the reason for this, one, z rocket launchers have a minimum range. So as soon as the heavies get past that minimum range, the rocket will have to shoot over their head at the farther away unit. Looks like... Real quick, we got a doom cannon here. Uh, that's what's making that weird little squeak noise. Pew! And it's killing these heavies one by one, but it shoots real slow, and there's a lot of heavies, so that is a bad smoke. Uh, what he's done there, luckily he was done with the map, but what happened with that smoke was he has stopped all enemy units from being able to attack his... his heavies which are his his health units his tank I, I hate using the word tank while playing this game because scorchers and tanks are tanks and although they are tanky that's not what I mean when I say that a heavy is a tank they have they're a high health low damage unit that are there to absorb hits and uh, when he covered them with smoke they were not able to absorb hits and then his really squishy easy to kill zookas got obliterated Luckily, he made that mistake right at the end. He still was able to take the core out. As far as what I was talking about here, as your as your army moves forward, what will happen is the mortar takes so long in the air that it's going to shoot at a heavy, but then your heavies and your zookas move forward because they killed this target, and your zookas walk right into it. So dropping a shock, maybe even two shocks on this cluster so that they weren't firing at his army at all, it would have helped a lot. And then there at the end, I, I wouldn't have dropped that smoke. I'm not sure why he did that. I mean, I know he probably was thinking, oh, this thing's shooting me, I need to stop it, but he could have shocked that too. Anyway, it would have cost a little less for him to rebuild his army at the end of the day, but he was successful. Huh, this is very similar, or if not like exactly the same as what T-Chan did last time. Uh, it's like the same base, so I'm sure he's going to use the same strategy because it's absolutely brilliant. Um, he's able to completely flank all of these units using smoke so that these units don't fire at him. He's going to flank over here. shock the only thing that's an actual problem killing them and then he'll just take this core out I mean so so simple uh, and and a lot of people would probably fight their way through all this and then once this general area was dead kill that but he was able to outflank the rockets and just everything I mean it's it's pure genius I'm really glad that he hated that it's a good attack so then we got Bigfoot with a rifle medic, Zooka. Uh, one boat of Zookas just to clean up any stray damage. He's killing this shock launcher as that would s seriously hinder his army. It would slow down his progress, slow down his ability to kill anything. This composition he's using here is uh, a lot of single target units with low health, but these are all single target towers that hit for high damage. So they'll one-shot these rifles, but there's so many riflemen that they're basically being outnumbered. And, uh, yeah, that's, that takes care of that. So he's going to shock these flamethrowers so that they don't melt his frontline riflemen. 
and then he's going to use health packs to negate the damage from these really inaccurate machine guns and the last flamethrower. Then I'm sure he'll drop a shock right up here. He's got the heals also to out heal those rocket launchers. And this is just so much DPS focused on that core. I mean, it's just absolutely obliterated. Great attack. All right, here we've got my attack. Oh, this was a fun attack, guys. I'm really excited to show you what I did here. This was really cool. So I did sort of a split composition where I, uh, these cannons, in 90% in of the time, your, your grenadiers will outrange cannons. So I sent my grenadiers up the left, and I sent my tanks up the right. And uh, my tanks have no threat until they get to that boom cannon and that cannon. And these guys have no actual threat, except sometimes they stand in a bad position and a cannon will shoot at them and kill them. There's not really much I've found that you can do about it. It's really hard to get these grenadiers positioned properly. You just kind of got to let them do their thing. But the main reason I do it, I did just, uh, excuse me, his stuttering Stanley. The main reason that I decided to do it this way, uh, these, these generators, these shield generators, they add a lot of health to this core. They easily double it, maybe a bit more. I can't remember how much health this core actually had, but... I want to destroy these before I do my assault on that core. So this is allowing me to garnish a lot of free gunboat energy from killing all these buildings. I'm going to kill the generators, freeing up a lot of health on this core. And in the meantime, I've got critters getting me even more gunboat energy. I have an absurd amount of gunboat energy stored up here. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. I didn't focus on what happened here on the right, but... I used, I believe, two barrages to kill this. I dropped critters on this line of boom mines. The, the few critters that lived then distracted this single cannon while these three tanks destroyed that cannon. And then now these have just finished taking the shield off this core completely. I've managed to kill all of these. And so, you know, it's all pretty smooth sailing here. But also just a lot of fun, just kind of like a really interesting... I, I've never seen a lot of people do attacks like this. People certainly don't attack my base like this. Obviously, my base isn't set up in a way that it would make such an attack quite as convenient. But I don't see a lot of pincer or split-style attacks from people, and it's something that I've been trying to do a little bit more. So, um... It may look like with 15 seconds left and me not having repositioned my units that I'm in danger, but I actually am sitting on close to 200 gunboat energy, and I'm about to dump all of it into this core. If you watch really closely, you'll see all the... Oh, I guess you didn't have to watch that closely. There was only two artillery shots, but... Yeah, that was that, and I hope you guys enjoyed because I had a lot of fun doing that attack. I actually didn't even orchestrate the attacks. I don't really do a lot of pre-thought on the attacks. I kind of look at what army I have ready at the time of the operation, and then I look at each of the bases, and I see if there's one I can do with my current composition so that I don't have to rebuild my army. I mean, if I can't do it with my current composition, absolutely I'll rebuild my army, but if I can avoid rebuilding my army, I usually do that. One other thing that I've been meaning to do, uh, I want to do a call out to my task force. They are a great task force. They're super low maintenance. Uh, we very rarely have any problems. There's no drama. And they're all just great. They get their attacks done in a timely manner and they do them good without any direction. You know, I, I never am telling them how to do their attacks or anything like that. We each kind of do our own thing and learn from watching each other's attacks. So. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you like, please feel free to hit that like button or share with your friends. If you want to see more videos from me, oh, you're always welcome to subscribe. And you can also follow my live stream by following me on Twitch or on Twitter at project underscore reaper, just like in the title and this channel here on YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook under project reaper. And, uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah, if you have any questions about the video or about any of those attacks or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment, and I would be more than happy to get back to you. And I think that's it. So thanks for watching, guys, and you guys have a good night.